You now know a bunch about machine learning. In this video, I'd like to teach you a programming language, Octave, in which you'll be able to very quickly implement the learning algorithms we've seen already and the learning algorithms we'll see later in this course. In the past, I've tried to teach machine learning using a large variety of different programming languages, including uh, C++, Java, um, Python, NumPy, R, and uh, also Octave. And what I found is that students were able to learn the most productively, uh, learn the most quickly, and prototype your algorithms most quickly using a relatively high-level language like Octave. In fact, um, what I often see in Silicon Valley is that uh, if, even if you need to build, if you want to build a large-scale deployment of a learning algorithm, what people will often do is prototype in a language like Octave, which is a great prototyping language so you can sort of get your learning algorithms working quickly. And then only if you need a very large-scale deployment of it, only then spend your time uh, re-implementing the algorithms in C++ or Java or some other language like that. Because one of the lessons we've learned is that programmer time or developer time, that is your time, you know, the machine learning experts time, is incredibly valuable. And uh, uh, if you can get your learning algorithms to work more quickly in Octave, then overall you have a huge time savings by first developing the algorithms in Octave and then implementing in like maybe C++ or Java only after we have the uh, ideas working. The most common prototyping languages I see people use for machine learning are Octave, MATLAB, Python, NumPy, and R. Um, Octave is nice since it's free open source, and uh, MATLAB works well too, but it's expensive uh, for, to many people. But if you have access to a copy of MATLAB, you can also use MATLAB for this class. If you know Python NumPy or if you know R, I do see some people use it, but um, what I see is that people usually end up developing somewhat more slowly in you know, these languages uh, because the Python NumPy syntax is just slightly clunkier than the Octave syntax. Um, and so because of that and because we're releasing starter code in Octave, uh, I strongly recommend that you not try to do the programming exercises in this class in NumPy R, but that uh, I do recommend that you instead do the programming exercises for this class in Octave instead. What I'm going to do in this video is go through a list of commands very fairly quickly, and the goal is to quickly show you the range of commands and the range of things you could do in Octave. The course website will have a transcript of uh, everything I do, and uh, so uh, after watching this video, you can refer to the, to the transcript posted on the course website when you want to find a command. Concretely, what I rec recommend you do is first watch the tutorial videos, and after watching you know, to the end, then uh, install Octave on your computer. And finally, go to the course website, download the transcripts of the things you see in the session, and uh, type in whatever commands uh, seem interesting to you into Octave, so running on your own computer, so that you can see it work for yourself. And uh, with that, let's get started. Here's my Windows desktop, and I'm going to start up Octave. And uh, I'm now in Octave, and, and there's my Octave prompt. Let me first show you the elementary operations you can do in Octave. So you can type in 5 plus 6, that gives you the answer of 11. 3 minus 2, 5 times 8. 1 over 2, 2 to the power of 6 is 64. So those are the er elementary um, uh, math operations. You can also do logical operations. So 1 equals 2, this evaluates the false. The percent command here is, um, uh, means a comment. So 1 equals 2, evaluates the false, which is represented by 0. 1 not equals to 2. Uh, this is true, so that returns 1. Note that the not equals sign is this tilde equals symbol uh, and not bang equals, um, which is uh, uh, what some other programming languages use. Let's see, logical operations 1 and 0. Use a double ampersand sign to denote the uh, logical and, and that evaluates the false. 1 or 0 this is the or operation, and that evaluates the true. And I can xor 1 and 0, and that evaluates the 1. This thing over on the left, this octave 324.exe colon 11, this is the default octave prompt. It shows the uh, what um, uh, version of octave and so on. Um, if you don't want that prompt, this is somewhat cryptic command, ps quote greater greater than and so on, that um, you can use to change the prompt. And I guess this uh, quoted string in the middle, you know, quote greater than greater than space, that's what I prefer my octave prompt to look like. So if I hit enter, um, oops, excuse me. 
like so, PS1, like so. Now my octave prompt has changed to the greater than, greater than sign, which, you know, looks quite a bit better. Next, let's talk about octave variables. I can take the variable A and assign it to 3 and uh, hit enter. And now A is equal to 3. You want to assign a variable, but you don't want it to print out the result. If you put a semicolon, the uh, semicolon suppresses um, the, uh, print, uh, the, the print output. So if I do that, enter, it doesn't print anything. Whereas A equals 3, you know, makes it print it out. Whereas A equals 3, semicolon doesn't print anything. I can do string assignment, b equals high. Um, now, if I just enter b, it prints out the variable b. So b is the string high. c equals 3 greater than or equal to 1. So now c evaluates the true. If you um, want to print out or display a variable, here's how you go about it. Let me set a equals pi. And uh, if I want to print a, I can just type a like so, and I'll print it out. For more complex printing, there's also the disp command, which uh, stands for display. So display A, it just prints out A like so. You can also display strings. So disp sprintf, two decimals, and percent 0.2, f comma A like so. And uh, this will print out the string, two decimals, colon 3.14. This is kind of a old style C syntax. Uh, for those of you that have programmed C before, this is essentially the syntax you use to print strings. So the sprintf generates a, spr generates a string that is this, you know, two decimals, 3.14 string. This percent 0.2f means um, uh, substitute a into here, showing it with, you know, two uh, digits after the decimal point. And uh, this takes the string that's generated by the sprintf command, sprintf, or the string printf command, and uh, this actually displays a string. And to show you another example, sprintf, six decimals, percent 0.6f, comma a. And uh, this should print pi with six decimal to, to six decimal places. Finally, I was displaying a like so, and it looked like this. You can actually, there, are, there are useful shortcuts. You type format long. It causes strings to, by default, uh, be displayed to a lot more decimal places, and format short is a command that restores the default of uh, just printing a small number of digits. Okay, that's how you work with variables. Now let's look at vectors and matrices. Let's say I want to assign ma A to a matrix. Let me show you an example. 1, 2, semicolon, 3, 4, semicolon, 5, 6. This generates a 3 by 2 matrix A whose uh, first row is 1, 2, second row is 3, 4, fifth, third row is 5, 6. What the semicolon does is um, essentially say, go to the next row of the matrix. There are other ways to type this in. Type A equals 1, 2, semicolon, 3, 4, semicolon, 5, 6, like so. And that's another equivalent way of assigning A to be the values of this um, 3 by 2 matrix. Similarly, you can assign vectors. So v equals 1, 2, 3. Uh, this is actually a row vector. Or this is a 3 by 1 vector. Right? This is a fat y vector. It's a, excuse me, not, uh, this is a, a 1 by 3 matrix, right? uh, uh, not 3 by 1. If I want to assign this to a column vector, what I would do is instead do v equals 1 semicolon 2 semicolon 3. And this will give me a 3 by 1 instead of 1 by 3 vector. So this is a column vector. Here's some more useful notation. I can also set v equals 1 colon 0.1 colon 2. What this does is it sets v to the um, bunch of elements that start from 1 and increments in steps of 0 0.1 until you get up to 2. So if I do this, um, v is going to be this you know, row vector, or this is a, what? Uh, 1 by 11 matrix, really. That's 1.1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and so on, until we get up to 2. Now, um, and uh, I can also set v equals 1 colon 6, and that sets v to be, you know, these numbers, 1 through 6. Okay. Now, here are some other ways of generating matrices. 1's, uh, 2 by 3 is a command that generates a matrix that is a 2 by 3 matrix that is the matrix of all 1's. So if I set C equals 2 times 1's 2 by 3, this generates a 
two by three matrix that is all twos. And uh, this is, you can think of it as a shorter way of writing this and it's equals two, 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 semicolon, two, 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 which will also give you the same result. Let's set W equals ones, one by three. So this is going to be a row vector or a, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a row of three runs. And uh, similarly, you can also set W equals zeros, um, one by three, and uh, this generates a matrix, a one by three matrix uh, of all zeros. Just a couple more ways to generate matrices. Um, if I do W equals rand one by three, this gives me a one by three matrix of all random numbers. If I do rand three by three, this gives me a three by three matrix of all random numbers drawn from the uniform distribution between zero and one. So every time I do this, I get a different set of random numbers drawn uniformly between zero and one. For those of you that know what a Gaussian random variable is, or for those of you that know what a normal random variable is, you can also set W equals rand n, one by three. Um, and so these are going to be three values drawn from a Gaussian distribution with mean zero and variance or standard deviation equal to one. And uh, you can set more complex things like W equals minus six plus square root 10 times, let's say rand n one by 10,000. And I'm gonna put a semicolon at the end um, because I don't really want this printed out. This is going to be a, a what, uh, well, this is going to be a vector uh, with um, 100,000, uh, excuse me, 10,000 elements. So, well, actually, you know what? Let's, let's print it out. So this will generate a matrix like this. Um, right, with uh, 10,000 elements, so that's what W is. And uh, if I now plot a histogram of W with the his command, I can now, and uh, octaves print his command, you know, it takes a couple seconds to bring this up, but this is a histogram of my random variable for W that was minus six plus square root 10 times this Gaussian random variable. And I can plot a histogram with more buckets, with more bins, with say 50 bins, and uh, this is my histogram of a Gaussian with mean minus six because I have a minus six there plus square root 10 times this. So the, um, the uh, variance of this, of, of this Gaussian random variable is 10 or the standard deviation is uh, square root of 10, which is um, about what, 3.1. Finally, one special command for generating a matrix, which is the I command. So I stands for, uh, this is maybe a pun on the word identity, but uh, so if I set I4, this is the four by four identity matrix. So set I equals I4, this gives me a four by four identity matrix, and uh, I equals I5, I6, that gives me a six by six identity matrix, and I3 is the three by three identity matrix. Lastly, to wrap up this video, uh, there's one more useful command, which is the help command. So you can type help i, and this brings up the help function for the identity matrix, um, hit q to quit. And you can also type help rand, brings up uh, documentation for the rand, or the random number generation function, or even um, help help, which shows you, you know, help on the help function. So those are the basic operations in Octave. Uh, and with this, you should be able to generate a few matrices, multiply, add things, uh, and, and use the basic operations in Octave. In the next video, I'd like to start talking about more sophisticated commands and uh, how to move data around and start to process data in Octave.